What's up Chiefs Kingdom, Noah Gray here, tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe to Joss's channel and check out showmefootball.com. What is up Chiefs Kingdom? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Josh Fan of showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com covering your Kansas City Chiefs. And today I am continuing with my free agents, the Kansas City Chiefs could sign series and we're moving on to the tight end position because I've got my eye on a few tight ends in this upcoming free agent class that I think the Kansas City Chiefs could look to add this offseason. So firstly, before we get into the list, as always, I'm going to explain why tight end is a need for the Kansas City Chiefs in free agency and why it makes sense to add one this upcoming offseason. Obviously, the Kansas City Chiefs already have their starting tight end in Travis Kelsey. He's going to be the number one tight end until he decides to hang it up. But the Kansas City Chiefs could definitely use some depth behind Travis Kelsey because an issue that the Chiefs ran into a lot in 2023 is this was one of the most physically taxing years of Travis Kelsey's career. He's 34 years old. He's in the twilight of his career. And he was given the responsibility of carrying the offense this past season and that was extremely unfair to Travis Kelsey because he's at that point in his career where he shouldn't be relied upon like he's still 26 years old because that's just not where Kelsey's at in his career anymore and if you want him to play as long as possible you need to get him some help you need to get some capable bodies behind him that allow him to give him a breather during the regular season so that Kelsey's body is ready for the postseason run and sure Noah Gray the backup tight end is a nice piece behind him but if you're running more 12 personnel and more sets that involve multiple tight ends, you're just going to need capable bodies in order to continue doing that. You have Blake Bell, who's an impending free agent, and then Jody Fortson, who's also an impending free agent. Blake Bell gives you little to nothing in the receiving game, and Jody Fortson has had trouble staying healthy, which just kind of leaves Travis Kelsey and Noah Gray as our only two locks for the roster next year. And so I think you've got to go out and get a tight end. And if I'm the Chiefs, I'm aiming a little bit higher for a backup tight end and free agency this time around. I'm looking for a guy that can give you about four to 500 yards in the receiving game, give you a few touchdowns, be a red zone weapon. And once again, give Travis Kelsey a breather because that's the most important thing here. You don't need to find a guy that's replacing Kelsey or that is even a starter, but you need to bring in someone that kind of similar to the wide receivers, has a track record of proven production and gives you a solid receiving target, a solid red zone target, so that Kelsey isn't shouldering the load of the offense like he was in 2023. So without further ado, let's get into the list of three free agent tight ends the Kansas City Chiefs could sign this offseason. The first guy I got on my list, and this is someone that was just released in the past week, and that is Atlanta Falcons tight end Jonu Smith. The Atlanta Falcons decided to release Jonu Smith, apparently deciding that Kyle Pitts is finally someone that they want to move forward with at the tight end position. They brought in Jonu Smith as competition for him and as someone that added a little bit more to their offense, but they're moving on from the 28-year-old tight end. Jonu Smith is still a really solid veteran, though. I think the Atlanta Falcons, with their new coaching staff, they're deciding to take a new direction. Jonu Smith was not a part of that vision, whatever it is. But he had a very nice season for Atlanta last year, catching 50 passes for just under 600 yards and three touchdowns. This is the exact kind of guy that you're looking for, and I don't think he'll cost too much money. He was only making about a few million dollars last year for Atlanta. He's got experience in this league. He was a very solid tight end for Tennessee not that long ago. This would be kind of the ideal mold that you're looking for, the ideal profile you're looking for, and a veteran tight end could definitely give Kelsey a break, could Create a nice little tight end tandem, actually. Johnny Smith and Travis Kelsey. That would allow you to use more multiple tight end sets where the defense actually has to respect the other tight end and what Johnny Smith would bring to the table. This is a guy that you can bring in on a one-year contract. This is all that would be for. And then maybe you find a guy in the draft this year to eventually take his place or you just do this again next offseason and bring in another veteran tight end. But Johnny Smith, to me, is one of the more realistic options and one of the better fits for the Kansas City Chiefs. Also worth noting that John U. Smith, since he was released, can be signed at any time and the Kansas City Chiefs don't have to wait until a free agency opens in order to sign him, but we'll see what happens. Number two on my list is Hunter Henry, 
the New England Patriots tight end. He's slated to be an unrestricted free agent this year. Uh, he's 29 years old, so he's getting a little bit older, but that makes him kind of that wily veteran that you're looking for to add to the tight end room. Another guy that had a productive 2023 season, Hunter Henry caught 42 passes for 419 yards and six touchdowns, which is uh, the most touchdowns of any tight end on my list. And I also find that pretty impressive given what the New England Patriots offense was last year and the terrible quarterback play they had. They had a revolving door of Bailey Zappi and Mac Jones. Neither of them were very good, and yet Hunter Henry found a way to catch six touchdowns last year. So that screams red zone weapon. Again, exactly what you're looking for. Hunter Henry would be another solid veteran tight end to add this offseason that I think you could bring in on a one- or two-year deal. It just wouldn't cost very much. His market value right now on SpotTrack.com is $7.5 million. I honestly think you could get him for a little bit less than that or at least make most of that contract incentive-based because he is older and it probably would just be a one-year deal. So, yeah, put me down as a big fan of the idea that this team could add Hunter Henry in free agency. And then the third and final guy I have on my list, and this is a little bit more of an upside play. This is someone that if the Kansas City Chiefs brought in, I think you give him a shot to prove that he can be, you know, your tight end of the future, or at least, you know, a backup tight end of the future. You know, if Noah Gray isn't retained after his rookie contract is up, um, but you definitely let him compete. <clears throat> and that is Noah Fant, the Seattle Seahawks tight end. Um, he was drafted by the Denver Broncos in 2019, but was famously included in the Russell Wilson trade. That's when he went over to Seattle, but he's just coming off his rookie contract. He's only 26 years old, so he's by far the youngest option. And like I said, this would be a little bit more of an upside play for the Kansas City Chiefs. You're bringing him in not only to be a competent backup tight end, but someone that maybe you think has quite a bit of untapped potential. He was a first round pick just a few years ago, number 20 overall by the Denver Broncos. 2023 wasn't a great year for Noah Fant. In fact, it was a career low in just about every category for him. Uh, he had a career low in catches. He had a career low in yards, 414 receiving yards, and he didn't have any touchdowns. But over his career so far, he's accumulated 252 receptions for just over 2,800 yards and 14 touchdowns. And um, back in 2020, that was his best season where he had 673 yards and three touchdowns for the Denver Broncos. I still think this is a guy that has potential that – could see an uptick in production in Kansas City's offense, especially if they're leaning on him a little bit more. And I also think there's another guy, you just have to consider the offenses that he's played in. Seattle was nothing special last year. And then we all know the disaster that the Denver Broncos have been for the better part of the last decade. And um, those just aren't two ideal situations for a guy like Noah Fant to go to. We know how much Kansas City utilizes the tight end position, both in blocking and receiving. I think all three of the guys on this list could help in both of those categories. And again, the main goal here is to give Travis Kelsey a breather while bringing in somebody that is a capable body, has some receiving ability, has a track record of being able to provide in the receiving game. All three of those guys do that. And Noah Fant, of course, does that. But I also think that he still has a lot of untapped potential, which makes him probably the most intriguing option on the list. And that's why... I put him in my top three, but yeah, guys, those are my thoughts on three potential free agent tight end targets the Kansas City Chiefs could bring in this offseason. I want to hear from you, though. Is there somebody different that I didn't mention that catches your eye? Do you agree, disagree with me? Let me know down below, but with all that being said, make sure you like, share, and subscribe so more Chiefs fans can find this, and make sure you check out my work on showmefootball.com and arrowheadaddict.com for more. I'll see you all in the next one. Go Chiefs!